Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. Three, two. That one's a good potion. <laughs> Come on, Rob, you're an actor. Get better at this. I know, right? God damn it. Should be for the outtakes, by the way. <laughs> okay, hello, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome to the Undead Gaming Cast, episode 5. I'm Rob the Undead Gamer, and welcome to the monthly podcast where myself and my very good friends talk about video games, the industry, and anything games related. Um, so, before we get into this, uh, I just want to apologize briefly uh, for la the lack of podcasts last month. Um, if you were following my channel, you know that I've been um, dealing with some crap with attempting to move out and not moving out and then stuff happening and not happening. And it's been very stressful. So that was why there was lack of uh, podcasts last month. So I do apologize for that. And also just want to quickly apologize for since April, since we started the podcast, I've been saying that this is going to be going on iTunes. I've still not managed to sort that out, but um, I'm going to be on it. Um, very soon, hopefully, and try and sort it out. So it's a lot more accessible for everyone to listen to. So, yes. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let me introduce today's um, podcasters. Um, Mr. Josh Whitehurst from Singularity Games. Hello, Hello. sir. Welcome. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Thank good, you for having good, me good. back again. Again. Yeah, I know. We can't Three get Three times you. on the go. This That's is good. becoming somewhat of a regular fixture in my uh, my calendar. Indeed, that's good, that's good. So, um, and also welcome to Mr. Ashton Vortio. We've not had you on the podcast for a while, but welcome back, sir. It's Hello. Good to, have you back. good to be back. Good, good. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Good, good, good. Okie dokie. So, um, before before we uh, get into the main sort of topics, is to let me just give you a rundown of um, how, how, this, how this goes. So, obviously, as I said, this is a monthly podcast um, where we talk about the video games but um, to start the uh, sort of show off we generally talk about what we've been up to what we've been playing this month anything interesting um, that's been happening and then we move into the main news topic or news topics of today's podcast and then we finish up uh, the show with um, this or next month's releases releases for the month of October so um Ashton, because we've not had you for quite a while, what have you been up to this month? What have you been playing? Um, well, I've been playing a lot of Destiny, and I'm, <laughs> I'm talking a lot. Um, but apart from that, uh, getting been getting back into older games like uh, Jack and Daxter. Nice. Um, going back over those, absolutely my one of my favourite series. So that's really good to be back and. Um, other than that, I played uh, PT. Oh yeah, which is just the scariest thing. Yeah, I didn't even manage to complete it. I was too scared. <laughs> I was like, nope. It oh, takes right. a lot to complete PT. Yeah. From what I've seen, there's shit that no human being on the planet of the Earth, apart from maybe Sherlock Holmes, would be able to solve on his own. Yeah, like he's just wandering it, around. Like it's what, ridiculous what? shit. <laughs> There's stuff you unlock in the pause menu. There's all sorts of shit that you have to link up. Like this has taken like a community of people on like forums to say, oh, there's this, there's this, there's this. If you do that, you get unlock that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and crazy. all that's come out of it has been a trailer for the new Silent Hills, mm. which has been rather interesting. Hills with an S. So yeah. Yeah. Disappointing. The many Silent Hills. Because <laughs> that one Silent Hill was really boring. Multiple now. How long? How how long ago was the first Silent Hill out? Oh my God! Oh God! This is nineties. Nineties, yeah. PS1 Early nineties. Like not probably much before or after the first Resident Evil game, I'd imagine. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when when was that released? Ninety four, ninety five, maybe. Yeah. So I think we're, pro we're probably talking ninety either ninety five, ninety six, maybe. I think. Got a guess. So I was about two or three when that game came out. <laughs> <laughs> I was slightly older. So yeah, but no, it's nice. It's nice to have um, sort of Silent Hill back, yeah. and it's you know with with, um, with PT. Like I think that's um, definitely an interesting sort of promotional trailer demo. Yeah, definitely. Sort of thing. I I definitely love to see a lot more games do that sort of thing. Yeah, it's a while shadow since you, like not no games anymore have demos. And that was like no. the closest thing to it, and that was a great way for advertising. And and th they've stated that PT is not even 
part of the finished product of Silent Hill. So that's not even something that's going to be in the game or part of the game. Even that storyline, I don't even think is connected to the game. It was just something they thought, let's do this. Because obviously there was, they weren't announcing it as a um, sort of interactive trailer uh, for Silent Hill. Mm. It was just something that they put out game, yeah. and ended up being a, a um, Silent Hill trailer. Yeah, it was really good. Like graphics and everything, amazing. Just the, ha- yeah. the fact you have to like sort of, like what, like the puzzle through it. I mean, the puzzle is ridiculously hard, but even that was great. And the scares, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and no, I, I saw, uh, I watched uh, Jesse Cox, OMFG Catter on YouTube, play it with his uh, friends when they were a little bit drunk. Um, and that was, it, it was hilarious. But it, it, what I was shut up, even just watching it. Mm. Like it, it's definitely something that you know it, it's done well, and I, th- I think from that, hopefully, we'll we'll see the return of some decent survival horror games because they've been kind of lack recently, really, yeah. um, with with games like Resident Evil and even sil- pre- the most recent Silent Hill games not being sort of critically acclaimed as they once were. Even they're Dead just, Space. We've just sort of moved away from that sort of um, survival, sort of inventory management. Run, yeah. run the hell away as fast as you can from everything into a more of an action horror sort of quick yeah. time event sort I mean, of thing. I mean, even Dead Space, which it, when that came out, I thought was that was good, that was the return, finally, of a sort of a decent survival horror. But then, as it's gone on, Dead Space Three, it's basically Gears of War slash Lost Planet, mm. which is a shame. I think the only thing sort of keeping the genre alive recently has, has been the indie market and games like Outlast and um, Amnesia. Yeah, Amnesia. Amnesia is a big one. Yeah, I, I, I do need to play that actually. I've heard it's absolutely terrifying. But hopefully, we'll see a we'll see a decent return to the genre. Yeah, hopefully. So yes, um, what what else you've been playing, Ashton? Um, as I said, Destiny mainly. Um, apart from that, uh, playing a bit of Forza, Forza Horizon. And I'm looking forward to Forza Horizon 2. Um, apart from that, no, I've been mainly sticking to the Destiny and Jack and Daxter. Cool, cool. Well, I won't ask you about Destiny just yet, because we will be talking about that a little bit later on, because what else are we going to talk about for a main topic, let's be honest. <laughs> um, but Jack and Daxter, it's a series I've not, I've never never played. Oh, it is a good series. It is really good. And the the change from the first one to the second one, the first one you're just what like am, am i right in thinking it's a naughty dog um ip or is it insomniac i think we might have lost him oh no hello ashton no yep. call drops goodbye oh we have lost him oh, okay yeah. well um good <laughs> <Did you? laughs> that's hype <laughs> Uh, well, whilst I try and bring him back, um, there we go. Let's try and bring him back. Uh, let's uh, move That's on. Josh, me. what have you been? What have you been playing um, this month? What I will you give you up? ten points if you can tell me what I've been playing this month, Rob. Honestly, because I say it every single time I'm on the podcast without fail. <laughs> <laughs> without um, fail. Hmm. Magic: The Gathering. Shit, he's good, guys. He's he's got it. He really has. He's yeah. No, I've been playing a lot of Magic: The Gathering, as always. Lots and lots of Magic: The Gathering. Sorry, just quick, Ashton. We are we back? Yeah, yeah, I'm back cool. now. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So, so yeah. So sorry, Josh. Um. So we. That that's that's all you've been up to then, uh, Ashton. Yep. Yep. That's pretty cool. much it. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Okay, so we're right to move on to, to Josh. Sorry, Josh, carry on. Fine. Um, yeah, no, lots and lots of Magic the Gathering. As, as per usual. As as always, I'm pretty sure that 90% of my life consists of of watching, playing, building, things to do with Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Um, it, it's pretty sad. Um, <laughs> but actually following our uh, following the, uh, um, the outrage after the last podcast, um, I actually have a gaming computer now. Awesome, uh, yes, yeah. And so I've been going back through the games that I bought for my Steam library, which I'd said I'd never had a chance to play, and I've actually been going back through and just playing some of those. 
So awesome. I'm, um, I played a bit of Guild Wars 2 because I bought that when it first came out and never actually got a chance to play it and really, really enjoying it. It's a bit different to what I'm used to. Seems a little bit less... Um, a little bit less railroaded. Okay. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, you, you can very easily wander into areas where where you're just totally out-leveled. But it's, it's it seems good. The community seems fun. Like, the game is, is actually very beautiful to play. Mm. And it's more like real-time versus the World of Warcraft when something hits you and then yeah. even if you move behind it, if it still swipes it where you were, you still take damage. It's actually... Yeah. It's kind of got like you've got like hit boxes now versus that sort of World of Warcraft esque style. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Aside from that, I've uh, I've restarted playing one of my like all time favorite games. Uh, that is Alan Wake. Yeah. Which is just uh, a psychological thriller game, which is yeah. just an awful lot of fun and just a total mind fuck. Just is I just Alan Wake, the one with the flashlight. It is. Yes. Yeah. Seen that? It looks really interesting. Such a game. the The basic premise is that he is a um, he's a writer, and he goes to a, a town to escape. Like he's got he's had writers block for years and years. He goes to a town to sort of see if he can get his his juice, his kind of back flowing. And his wife is petrified of the dark, and uh, they have an argument, and the lights go out, and she disappears. Dun dun dun. You're basically trying to find you're basically trying to find your wife again. Um, but shit is a bit paranormal. Like there's, you know, the people are taken over by like the darkness and the shadows, uh, and so that's where the flashlight comes in. You need to like shine your flashlight on them to break the darkness's hold of them, and then you can actually shoot them to actually like deal damage. Otherwise, your gun doesn't actually hurt them. And it's, it's really, really tense. Yeah, very, no, I've got to say, like, well, I remember when it when it first came out, it was um, heralded as quite a a good good game with a good concept and a good storyline I, I love that game really yeah. really love that game so, sadly it's one I, I've, I've uh, missed out on playing but um, I mean to be honest you could pick it up for like less than a fiver and I mean if, if yeah. you do see it and it's a fiver I, I would I would I'd snap your arm off to get it I really would but I mean I, I've heard I've heard not everybody liked it but I, I, I fell in the camp that absolutely adored the game I thought it was it was brilliant yeah um trying to think of what else i've actually played quite a lot so it, it's it's a bit unusual i played some game dev tycoon i don't know if you've played you guys know of it uh, not played it no of it game dev tycoon i have no idea really no, no. it's kind of a um, similar to a sort of railroad zoo railroad um roller coaster tycoon-esque game where you basically have to make video games and make money and like grow your company from like you know your mum's shed into like, into you know, into the equivalent of like Blizzard or Activision or oh, right. whoever. It's like it's an indie game. Um, yeah, it's on it's on a, on Steam. Really, really basic concept, but very very addictive. Mm. Not difficult to pick up, not difficult to play, but very very addictive and very reward very rewarding actually as well. But um, yeah, that's pretty much me. So what about yourself then, Rob? Well. Um... Surpri- well, uh, surprisingly, I'm not going to say what I've always said since we started this podcast, because the only thing I seem to have been playing since we started this podcast has been Fallout 3. Three. <laughs> but I don't think this month I've actually played it or picked it up. Um, yeah, I know, which is crazy. Um, but what I, what I have been up to in the... Um, in oh, not It's not a lot, really, because obviously I've, uh, it, within the process of moving and everything, everything has been packed. Uh, but the most sort of recent weeks, I've uh, picked up Skyrim again. Uh, so not too dissimilar from Fallout, <laughs> but um, picked up Skyrim again, which um, I, I, I love that game to bits really, still. Really I yeah, absolutely love that game. Not bad game. And I, I've still I've still got um, still got the vanilla version. I've not got any of the DLC. Uh, I'm playing on console, so I can, you know it's, it's not not modded or anything. Um, but no, still absolutely love that game to bits. So I've decided uh, to sort of go through the um, all the miscellaneous quests that have just sort of stacked up on me, um, sort of doing those here and there. Um, and I've also started the Dark Brotherhood quests as well, which is I love been... that line. That line's really, really good. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the Dark Brotherhood quests in Oblivion. Yeah. Um, and was a little bit disappointed when I became the listener that everything kind of stopped and mm. there was no more 
missions to do because I absolutely adored it. It was amazing. Um, so I've been heavily looking forward to playing it in Skyrim. I've kind of been putting it off because I've you know not wanted to just go through it. Um, kind of wanted to save it, as it were. Um, but started it, um, enjoying the sort of premise and the concept at the moment. So I'm looking forward to really delving in more. I've only sort of done the first three contracts that you get initially get given. Um, but yeah, no, very, very good, very enjoyable. Um, uh, I started streaming a little bit of it on over the weekend, um, sort of playing a new character. Um, which I might continue to to do on future streams. Did you, um, uh, did you take my Did you take my challenge of hard mode that I tweeted you? I did. You? Yeah. So I'm playing on expert. Oh my. Um, because I think there's like there's expert, then there's legendary, and then if there's another one, it's like you, you're gonna fucking die, um, <laughs> or whatever. But. Yeah, no, so I'm sort of playing on um, Expert. If, if I get the hang of it and it's not so bad, I might bump it up to Legendary, we'll see. Um, but I'm taking your advice on it. I'm, I'm playing something totally different to what I normally play. Not an elf. No, not an elf. I'm that, playing was, the, a Breton. that was the challenge. Yeah, so I'm play on, the str on the stream I'm playing a Breton um, sort of battle mage okay. type in heavy armor That's sort funny. of thing. Sounds good. So yeah, give, given the given the magic a, a bit of a go, because my 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 sort of main character that I play is kind of a jack of all trades in a sense. Um, so because obviously Skyrim's so open ended that you've got the opportunity to do that, which I love. Um, so when it came to doing the Mages Guild quest, I just picked up some magic. But now I'm not doing it. I'm not using magic anymore. But it was an opportunity to sort of test it out, test the waters. But now with the sort of Breton, I'm going to give it a proper go. Um, so yeah, so yeah, thoroughly enjoying that, um, as as I always do. Um, but aside from that, um, earlier this month, uh, not video games related, but earlier this month, I went LARPing um, to my usual club, which uh, was thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. had a had a weekend's worth of LARPing. Um, such a great event. Really good, really good to get back into the swing of things. Um, and my old character, who'd previously died last year, managed to get him back um, from the the dead. Although he he wasn't actually dead, but um, necromancer scum. He was kind of kind of lost in in um, limbo in a sense. Uh, there's a sort of like um, world where there's a entity called the mists, um, which kind of takes people and. Um, Makes they they just disappear essentially and don't return, um, but my character never actually died. So yeah, so not strictly back from the dead, but back playing him. So which is which is awesome. So yeah. Can I just reiterate, by the way, for those who don't know what LARPing is, is effectively it's a uh, you, you you actually it's similar to Dungeons and Dragons in the sense that you role play a character, but yep. you dress up in armor and you take your big like latex sword, and you go and you beat the living shit out of each other. Whilst playing amongst the story, I've had yeah. a lot of fun. But you set you set essentially embody yourself in um, as a character, as a character that you would play in like a tabletop role playing game or D and D or World of Warcraft, for example. But um, it's you and yourself and everyone else playing these characters, and it's amazing. It's re it's it's the greatest exp like um, oh god, what's the what's the word? Um, it's the greatest example of escapism yeah. and role play. It's that, it's that extra it's that extra step from the table upwards. Sorry? Much. It's the extra step from the, the table upwards where you can be heavily role playing a character in, in D and D up to yeah. up to literally embodying your character. Which yeah. I think it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, no, I enjoy it, I love it. It's that's my thing. I'd, so yeah. Um just a quick one, uh, that I forgot because you mentioned um a sort of non video game one. Was actually uh, myself, Rob, and uh, uh, several other people actually were, le were lucky enough to have a go at um, Betrayal at the House on the Haunted Hill. The is it Betrayal, yeah. on the, Betrayal at the Mansion on the Hill, or it's something? Sorry, it's got yeah, really I, did, I didn't actually title. get a chance to play it, but you did. Oh my god, that game! If if you if you guys want a tabletop night, and one of your friends has got that, it is fantastic. We did yeah. a treasure hunt. I was the traitor the once. Uh, the house got flown away by gigantic birds like the game changes like virtually every single time you play it and the wind conditions change every time you play it so 
But yeah, yeah. No, I just figured that was definitely worth an honourable mention as, as something that I've been playing that's not yeah. necessarily yeah, no, definitely. video game related. Definitely. Yeah, no, I, I, I hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks I'll get a chance to play that myself because I... I'm looking forward to playing it. It's something I do want to definitely play. Yeah. Um, and uh, f just finishing up, I've also uh, playing a little bit more Magic, uh, Magic the Gathering, which I'm slowly discovering I'm just absolutely terrible at. Not that um, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely terrible. I, I, had a, I had a couple of games with uh, Tasha last night when we got home from uh, Game Society, um, and we, we, we were doing quite well. She sorted out her deck now, which she's kind of happy about. Is it um, OP now? Sorry. Is it OP? Is she just caning you continuously? No, no. Ours, I think ours are quite uh, well matched, really. That's good. Uh, I mean, I've got a couple of possible win conditions in my deck, which are some could say are OP, but I don't think they are. And that's the Hornet's Nest and the uh, Hornet Queen, Queen, which I managed to get um, in the last uh, the M15 pre-release, which was awesome. Which basically, when you draw the you put the Hornet's Nest out. When uh, it's a defender, so when anyone attacks you, you you just defend with the hornet's nest. Say you're being attacked by a three-three, um, the amount of damage that hornet's nest is dealt um, allows you to bring on that many or that many um, insect, insect tokens. creature tokens with flying and death touch onto the battlefield at one ones. You're just so impossible to kill. I yeah. have death touch so much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hornet Queen is amazing because when you bring her on, she brings four, four. of those little yeah. bastards along with her. See, I, I've, um, as, as I'm sure you know, I mean, if, you, if you've ever watched any of any of my content at all, like you'll know that I'm super, super into magic. Yeah. Um, and I, I've been, I just watch, I watch people play it constantly and I saw a, a, an amazing deck which was, uh, it's a shell called Reanimator, where you effectively use your graveyard as a resource. So people put in Hornet Queens into the graveyard, reanimating them with spells for like less than they should be able to play, then having them killed and then whipping them back with a, a cockle whip of Erebos so they get another four tokens. Yeah, that's crazy. It's nuts. It's that's it's crazy. a ridiculous. I mean, it's good extremely card. satisfying when you you when someone forgets you've got a hornet's nest on the battlefield and they attack you with their massive giant fuck off monster that's like an eight eight or something, nope. and you're like, oh, okay, that's fine, just eight insect creature tokens, one one with think, flying and death my, touch. I think I think Rob has to tell an embarrassing story now. Um, oh. So so Rob last night was at Game Society with us. Um, how how did you lose one of your games last night, Rob? Um, I got killed by a planeswalker that wasn't a player. <laughs> she, she 20, 20 turns. Uh, deals one she damage wouldn't every die. Turn. One damage every single turn for 20 turns. And he lost. Oh, Embarrassing. <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> it, was when she, it was when she pulled out her ultimate, because it was Chandra. Chandra Horror Master, for those who are interested, by the way, if you actually want to go look at the, uh, the card. Yeah. So, yeah. So I got I got totally wrecked last night. Nice jokes. Um, but you know, you win some, you lose some. I guess. It's not quite that embarrassingly though. <laughs> oh. <coughs> anyway. Right. On to, back onto topic because I so, think people yeah, start to kill um, themselves that we're talking so about. So that's that's all I've been playing. Um, anyone? Everyone? Cool to move on? Yeah, no, I'm fine with move on. That's fine. Yeah. Ashton. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Cool. Okay. So. Um, moving on, obviously, onto the main news topic for uh, this month. Obviously, Destiny has come out this month, and if you don't know that Destiny has come out, or you don't know what Destiny is, where the hell rock. have you been for the last where year or two? Been? You must be living under a rock, because this game has had so much hype, so much advertising, so much everything behind it, You would, I, I don't understand how you would not know about Destiny. Um... So Destiny come out. <laughs> Has anyone had a chance to play it? Yes, very much so. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Slowly well, eating your life. Yeah, it's. I've done nothing apart from play Destiny. <laughs> but are, what, are you, what are you playing it on system wise? Uh, I'm playing it on PS4. Okay. Um, and it is a great game. There's, there's no way I can say any, any wise anything about it that's bad. I can't. It's just, it's just great, great fun. It's like, I mean, obviously, it's it's been around for a while. I know the name. I know that it was developed by was it Bungie or four three four or whatever they're called. Yeah, I knew it was Halos. Yeah. One of one of Halos' daddies. 
uh, or mommies, I guess. Um, but yeah, so just for like those who are slightly more ignorant amongst us, uh, do, you, do you care to explain the sort of basic principle? Well, it's it's very fun. It's very uh, Halo-like. It's, it is a first-person shooter, so it's very similar to everything else. Uh, very fast-paced, and but it's it's just so yeah. It is standard, but at the same time, it's the fact that it's a single player story but online kind of thing so it is very merged together how you can just play with random people play with your friends just to do story or to just play online in like a team deathmatch um team death because it's, it's kind of that it's kind of that strange um mix of some you know just, uh, online multiplayer yeah. uh, um cod -esque. Um, and MMO, yeah, it's, it's, it's that weird mix. But it, is it is it done well seamlessly? Is it's it? It's done very well, very well. It's that nothing about the multiplayer is overpowered or anything. Like um, the the weapons you use in multiplayer are the same weapons that you would use in your single player. So yeah. it's and but everything's leveled out. All the um, weapons are. Uh, like nulled, so the power is all the same, no matter what level you are. Yeah. So that's, that's go, encouraging to hear. When you go onto multiplayer, you're more thinking of the weapon's abilities. Say an assault rifle. One of the abilities you have is um, the last bullet in your clip does extra damage or something. Um, that would be more useful than just a standard assault rifle, which won't doesn't have an extra ability. So for online, it's a little more... The weapons you choose are more tactical instead of just the pure power, which is... it's So nothing's, like, unfair in the game, which is really it's, nice. It's just, it's just making sure you've got something that gives you that little extra edge as opposed to just yeah. totally being it's able to obliterate something. people, f you know, for no good reason. And the thing is, you have to really play the story and the multiplayer to mm. get to be able to advance like if you go into the multiplayer without playing much of the story you won't have any good weapons any good armor and obviously yeah it is leveled out but you kind of have to have more so, so they can't they complement each other quite seamlessly then really which well is, really yeah. well and like the multiplayer the rewards you get are obviously like money so you can buy things but you can also get weapons and armor um for the single player kind of thing oh so, right that's sweet and there's loads of things like um, bounties that you can do. Um, so, you know, kill this many enemies using this weapon. Um, and it is kind of a, you do a quest and you then hand it in like an RPG. But it is the same kind of fast-paced uh, FPS as you would expect kind of thing. Mm. But th there's nothing wrong about the game at all. But there are a couple of things I wish they had done a bit more on. <laughs> Like, but I, I suppose those things will come out in DLC or something. Yeah. Dreaded word. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is being published by Activision, and you know that that there's a lot of things that Bungie, I suppose, have wanted to do or want to do or will do, but the final decision of how that happens um, will be decided by Activision. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, Activision as a whole. They're not bad. They're not the worst. I mean, comparing them to someone like EA, I don't think we're, they're quite on that scale um, of bad. But at the same time, they're a big publisher. They can do what they want, sort of thing. To be fair, actually, so, EA have got a lot, a lot better over the last like year or so. Yeah, no, they're, they're trying. They're trying to claw it back. They are. All their their Plants vs Zombies, all of that stuff is now free. Like their all their DLC for Plants vs Zombies, Garden Warfare is free. They've stopped putting in um, the you know you know you needed the season passes for sports games. I'm sure you've oh, heard of this. Yeah. That's gone now as well apparently. So. Okay. I, I guess like slowly but surely they've realised that people started to absolutely hate them. Mm -hmm. Well, they have made some very choice decisions over the past couple of years. Choice that... decisions is a good word. That's, yeah. that's very polite. That's probably yeah the polite way to fucking say it to be honest. <laughs> um, but like speak, speaking from someone who who's not, um, and I think Josh, you're in the, the same situation here. Um, we've not played Destiny, 
So the only thing that I know of about Destiny is kind of what I've heard, what I've decided to listen to or um, read about or anything like that. Um, so really from someone on the outskirts looking in, um, the game's got some some mixed mixed reviews really with with, with certain people, um, and th there's there's a lot of things that someone looking off from the outside in, um, I can kind of have I, I've got an opinion about you know thinking oh that's a bit not that's Suspect. not good that's not that's not what I would have expected um, to, to give to give you some examples um, the the storyline has taken some sort of uh, a bit of flack. With it, seeing you know, with with people seeing it as uh, quite lazy, or you're not kind of getting everything you you should have out of it. Um, for example, I know at the start when you sort of start your character, there's you, you meet whoever it is, and they're like, oh, so there's this faction and these people, and that has happened. I could tell you about it, but I can't right. be bothered essentially. Um, and it, it, there's a lot of things that about the storyline and about the world that you have to kind of go on the internet and find out about if you so choose, which to me is not the way to do it that that should all be seamlessly put into the gameplay the the storyline the cutscenes so i've i've heard you, very much have you got same. had that sort of impression or that experience ashton um well the thing about the storyline is it isn't it isn't really that good uh but it is really you you kind of finish it you finish the, the storyline kind of thing and it's kind of like oh that's a bit disappointing yeah but then you think about it and it is the start of the story yeah because they've got something like a 10 year like ridiculous 10 year plan for this game um and they which they release more story of missions and and whatnot so it, but, you can understand it's the start, but at the same this, time, it's really frustrating how you buy a game and you can't finish it. Is this yeah. gradually meant to be happening over the course of, I mean, obviously DLC, dreaded word again, but is it is uh, is the story going to expand through means of DLC, or are they going to go Destiny 1 through 10 to, to, to tell the story? No, uh, the Destiny plan is a 10-year plan just for this game so it will all be dlc i assume or just updates like they've done i think something like three updates since it's come out and they've all just been like you just start destiny and it takes like 10 minutes to update kind of thing um and you'll have a couple more things um when you start it so i don't know how much is going to be bought dlc and how much is going to be updates but so far, I've like, added do, a fair bit. Just do you do you feel that what you've got though for what you know what you've paid essentially? Um, do do you feel that you've got enough story or enough of this this world like in in what you've bought, or do you feel like a little bit cheated, almost as if they've made this entire storyline and thought, okay, how can we best chop this up into itty bitty episodic things, you know? No, I'd say I. It's definitely enough. Like this game is huge. I mean, it's not like it, physically the maps are huge. Yeah. And just like everything about it, there's so much to do that I still haven't like done everything. And I would say this is entirely enough. It's just you feel it's not enough because it's not complete. Okay. It's, yeah. it's like ending a game. It's like ending like an amazing game on just a huge cliffhanger. Okay, yeah. So it's it's kind of it's amazing, but you you you're left well, feeling empty after after you um, So you know, regarding these updates then, have you had some more story bits and pieces to do since those updates have come out then? Have you have you gone back to the single player and, you know, Captain XYZ has got an extra mission for you or whatever? Well or, um, or have they solely been just to like weapons or maps or vehicles things like that I don't, I don't actually quite know what the setup is so far they've done with the the updates they've uh they've brought out this big like it's like a raid I, i've never played any of like many uh mmos or anything so i don't mean really know much about like raids or anything but they brought out this raid which i think the first person the first group to complete it it took them like I don't know, like 16 hours or something to complete. Something ridiculous. Jesus. So it is, it is something that you have to play over a couple of days. So 
they brought that out. And it's I, reminiscent, really, of uh, something I used to play for seven years on and off. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't quite tell you what that was at all. No. But it is. It, so they have brought out that, but I don't think anything proper story wise has come out. Yeah. Recently, they've just brought out um, something to do with. Uh, there's like a, a queen in the game, and you have to do missions for her. And you earn points for this, but so far, I don't think they've actually got anything that you can use the points for um so right now it's using the points and i assume later on they'll bring out a story where you can use the points kind of thing but i suppose it all feels like a, it is heading somewhere it's it's yeah, yeah, you know it it's, it's, it's slowly coming together it is yeah and it, it it's a bit weird that you kind of buy a game and it's not complete and you have to wait out wait a bit yeah for, for more which is yeah odd because i've never experienced that but at the same time it's it is really good like it's not you You don't feel frustrated that nothing's come out you just feel a bit like i don't know anticipation but you're still content with the game so yeah yeah but yeah it is, i mean it is a really good game it really there's, a, there's a lot of um like so some of the opinions i've heard as well it's like um some people who who, who, I, who I've, I've listened to, they've, um, they they played WoW and they've started they started back in the day like vanilla WoW and you know everything was fresh, everything was new and it was all exciting. Oh, let's explore this dungeon. What can we what can we explore in this raid? What can we get out of it? That sort of thing. And a lot of their opinions on Destiny have been very reminiscent of that sort of first starting out in vanilla WoW, where everything's really quite new and exciting, which a lot of MMOs haven't really had much of that sort of initial excitement i mean is is everything sort of i mean i don't know you've not really had, delved into the mmo scene but is it all new and exciting and sort of fresh and different it, or it, it, kind it, of standard in your opinion ashton it is very different like the whole thing is is different like there's so many new things but at the same time since it is a first-person shooter, it's very familiar. So yeah. The, the gameplay in just the normal shooting to kill monsters kind of thing is very standard. And the majority of missions is, oh, there's a group of enemies gathering here, go kill them. And that yeah. is the majority of, of your missions, even though there is a bit of story in between. Um. But yeah, all the all the new like weapons and uh, your ships and and the the vehicles you can use. Not many vehicles, but still, it, it's it's interesting to to do use all this stuff and yeah. the whole idea of the um going to different worlds and experiencing the different landscapes is really is really cool. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's majorly groundbreaking. Yeah, no, because I, I know it's not it's not exactly groundbreaking at all, really. It's not it's not done anything new to the genre, really. Um, it's not on the highest sort of specifications graphically. It looks beautiful, and they I mean they stated it would they were making it at 30 fps, and they've done so, and they've stuck with it, and they've done 30 fps really fucking well. Um, so you know, good job there. Yeah. Um, so, but but yeah, it's not it's not definitely not a groundbreaking game. But um, does it ever doing... feel a bit grindy like an MMO would? Do you ever do you ever feel like you're just like, oh, I, I you know, do you ever feel obliged to need to just kill a few monsters just for that extra bit of experience for the levels because the the story isn't providing you enough? Yeah, yeah. A lot of the time, you'd you do a mission, you do another mission, you do another mission, and that will be fine. And then the next mission's a little bit hard. So you have to go kill some more creatures just to be able to do the next mission. But that's kind of where the multiplayer comes in. You can go, you can just jump right into the multiplayer, uh, level up. So a it bit. kind of breaks up the grind a little bit. Yeah, and then. Um, but the the thing is, you you never have to play multiplayer if you don't want, because multiplayer is very competitive, very fast paced, and it's not for everyone. Um, whether the story it, it is, honestly, it's enough to just play the story. Um, and kill like the random mobs that are around. Uh, so the grinding isn't that bad, but mm. ever so often it is, does get a bit repetitive once you've done it a couple of times. 
but you know it it's it is good like i can't complain it's it's fun which is what it's game what you want out of the game really yeah so yeah although you do have to do a bit of grinding to get the things it's still good the most the most annoying thing i can i can think of is for some weapons you have when you upgrade them usually to upgrade them you spend a little bit of money but with rare items you have to upgrade them using money and say some extra parts that you found and getting those parts is such a pain you have to like fly around whatever place you're going to and collect these things or you have to get items and like dismantle them to get parts I mean, is so, that is that fun to do, like, or is that just tedious? Do you that think? is tedious. I think that's the most tedious. Like grinding and stuff isn't that bad, because if you're grinding, you're just doing it for experience or just a bit of fun. Yeah. When you're actually trying to get a specific item, it's that isn't that common. It is really annoying. Yeah, it's yeah. a pain in the ass. So yeah. It was always the same with uh, a game that we played for several years on and off. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was the same. Croft. Really want that mount, or oh, let's run that dungeon 17 times until it yeah. drops. Like, yeah. Just the way it is. Yeah. I guess. Like, what, like, sort of, not necessarily moving away from Destiny, but with, in terms of, like, other games, like, do you think it's, it's lived up to the hype? Do you think that, you know, do you think that games should have been hyped up as much as Destiny? Yeah, because like, I, I suppose that's really what, what the main, the ma the ma today's main topic is, really, is, because we can't, all totally talk about Destiny because obviously myself and Josh have not played it, but yeah, does it does it live up to the hype? Um, and it, is it is hype a good thing? I guess. I reckon it is. I I think it has, but at the same time hasn't. Is that just because of the slow sort of episodic nature of it? Though? Yes. Yeah, that is the the big thing. Like it is. A really good game, and I can't really say much bad against it. Like, yeah, I I can I can play this game for so much longer, but it is the fact that you have to wait ages to actually play more of the game. So, the hype for the release date maybe not such a good idea, but the actual hype for the, for just the game in general, it's worth it kind of thing it's, it's it maybe hard to understand but like I, I get it i get it yeah do i mean do you think there's people who will still be playing destiny in 10 years time because they've got this 10 years plan like oh. you, can you can you honestly see yourself playing destiny for the next 10 years no no me personally i've i don't think i've ever played a, a game for longer than a year really um but more than the hardcore gamers like say ever so often i'll go play on COD 4 again or something and there'll still be people playing it like non-stop like the highest level it can possibly be because they enjoy it and it is a kind of game that I can see a lot of people playing for a long time but me personally no I don't think I'll play this for longer than a year I, sp I suppose it sees it, it, you'll have to see where it goes really because that that's probably it's probably the opinion of a lot of people Apart from maybe the hard the hardcore amongst the the uh, Destiny fan base, mm. is that they're possibly like yourself, where like, I'm really enjoying it. It's really good, but ten years, I'm not sure if I'll still be playing. I suppose it, it depends on what sort of decisions they make along the way, where everything goes, how much it's sort of drip fed to you, because it appears that they're trying to drip feed mm. as much of it out as possible. Um, so I I don't know if if something massive happens could you would do you think that that would be like your be all or end all well I, I think it's the kind of thing that i'll play a bit of and then i'll maybe get bored of it and then i'll hear that they've got a new update and so i'll go back to it jump back in yeah there's it's it's a really easy game to just pick up and play like, I mean, to be honest, that's what a lot of people do now nowadays with MMOs. Yeah. You know, they, they they play the new content, they play the new update, and once they're all done with that, they just sort of, okay, yeah, I'll wait for the next one, wait for the next expansion, wait for the next update, and then I'll jump back in again. Mm. Well, I was literally about to say this. I mean, like, obviously, Destiny has is, is been spoon-fed to you bit by bit by Bungie, um, but surely, actually, I think that's that's probably more interesting than being 
the, you know, then like you know, when you started playing Vanilla WoW, and then you had to wait for Burning Crusade, and then you finished Burning Crusade, and you had to wait for Wrath of the Lich King, and then you had to wait for Carcass, and then you had to wait for Mr. Pandera. Yeah. You know, like at least with uh, with at least with Destiny, at least there's like you know, you don't play it for three weeks and you come back, and there might be something new to do. Yeah. Or there might be some new weapons to collect, or there might be some new vehicles to drive, or some but new I mean, maps I mean, to play. To, to, to be fair, with even even um even even WoW. You get a new expansion, but event you know eventually you start getting the big updates, you know the story updates where you know they'll progress the story a little bit more, or there'll be that new dungeon that's opened up, or whatever, you know that sort of thing. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, what what other games do you think yeah, like, I, I this year have been super hyped? Like a game like this year? Can't really think of anything. Advanced yeah, I mean, Warfare would be been hyped, but of course it hasn't come out yet. Yeah, just thinking like, I mean, obviously, aside from your your very, 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 very usual suspects, your Call of Duties, your Fifas, your Assassin's Creed, your Assass yeah, your Assass yeah, your Assassin's Creeds, like, I mean, Shadows of Shadows of Mordor has actually been trending on Twitter for the last like three days now. Yeah, Shadow of Mordor, but it wasn't never no, never particularly like I didn't ever feel it was hyped at me, not in no. the same way that Destiny was, but for some reason it's. Like their sort of like after after release campaign has just really I I found that Shadow of Mordor has been more hyped than Destiny really for me. Just... I I hadn't really seen much of it to be honest. Like I mean I'm 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 very much into Lord of the Rings. I'm very sort of I I I kind of got on the Shadow of Mordor train about mm. probably probably when I did the first podcast so about three months ago. And I I remember yeah. saying to Rob the first time I saw it I was like man have you seen this game like. It, it's you know it's it's a new Lord of the Rings IP and it looks really interesting and stuff and and Rob was kind of like oh well, you know I've not really seen much of it like let's let's kind of wait and see what happens um, but like and then apart from that I mean aside from like you know you're kind of E3 and you watch you know they released a few videos about Nemesis and stuff not heard anything about it at all. See the thing is with something like Shadow of Mordor compared to Destiny, with Destiny I didn't there was never really many trailers out for it that i can think of like but for shadow of mordor there were constant trailers I, i've seen at least five trailers five six trailers for it but with yeah. destiny it was more advertising the game but without constantly releasing trailers but for shadow they of did mordor, go they did go through via like a tv campaign i mean I, yeah. I i dread to think the amount of times i've seen the destiny advert or i've been watching the telly this week yeah, or even on it's, it's even on YouTube, YouTube or Twitch, yeah. Twitch, you know, you tune anywhere. into a video, you've got Destiny, you know, just plastered all over it and advertising. I mean, I they, they sick of the name of it now, to be completely honest. Yeah. <laughs> the ca the campaign drive for it has been has been immense, I think. Um, although, kind of, I suppose, a little bit subtle in I some guess. respects, because obviously, yeah, no, I don't, I don't recall seeing all these different trailers all the time, but you know, like. I don't know. The, just seeing the adverts on YouTube and on Twitch and all that, it, it is everywhere, really. I mean, like, what? I mean, b before Get Destiny, like, obviously, we've just said it was a bit more subtle. But what was, what for you guys was the game that was the most, you know, like, serious, super hyped up before, like, you know, what was the last game that you could think of that like, was like just seriously like revved up before? I mean, like, Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah. I mean, was there something after that? GTA Five. GTA, GTA 5 was probably the then, And then before that, something like, I don't know, Red Dead or Halo, maybe? Possibly, yeah. I mean, like, d thinking of... Um, because I, I don't personally think hype's a good thing. Not at all. Not always. Um, in, in many ways, it it, it, it... it kind of destroys your opinion of a game. Um, because I hype, to me, is... i give you the perfect example, in my opinion. Fable 3. Yeah. Okay. Peter Molyneux is the worst thing to have happened to Fable, and the best thing because obviously he's the creator of it. But he's the worst thing to have happened to Fable, because Fa I remember when Fable Three was being, um, you know, they, they were talking about it. It was E Three, whatever you, you know, they were turning, showing, showing trailers of it. They were talking about it. Everything Peter Molyneux was hyping up to the max. Even the original Fable, he was hyping up to the max because they they were saying um, that Fa the original Fable was going to be. Uh, a groundbreaking game. It was going to be the game that changes RPGs forever. Which, let's be honest, 
that's quite a statement. That's a big statement, yeah. That's I mean... quite a statement to say. So if you're saying that your game is literally going to change RPGs forever, you better fucking deliver on it. And Fable's a phenomenal game. I love Fable, but it's not groundbreaking. No, it's it, not. It, or, well, it is a little bit, but it's not... It's, it's not like it's Elder not changed Scrolls. RPGs. It's not Elder Scrolls groundbreaking, I don't think, no, at all. No, 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 no. It's not changed RPGs forever. I don't think it has. It might have influenced aspects and influenced certain things or devs or whatever, but it's not changed RPGs forever. But Fable 3, I remember them talking about all the, you know, this, this, um, all the interactions you could do, the holding hands and all that, and how amazing it was. All these different silly little things and the storyline and everything like that and how graphically beautiful it is, blah, 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 blah. And it was, it, you know, it is a great game, but with all that hype, I was disappointed. Yeah, I mean, I, was I always found myself disappointed, disappointed with Fable, with Fable um, just because of how short it always is. Yeah, it's yeah. Very, I mean, very, very even short. even Fable Two, I had this opinion of Fable Two. Like Fable Two is even shorter than Fable Three. Like I, 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 I played, I played Fable Two. I got up at nine o'clock one morning and played Fable Two, and by three o'clock I was done. Yeah, I'd played it. I'd played it previously, so I knew exactly where I was going and things. But I'd played that. I played that game through, start to finish, in six hours. See, I, I got. I felt I got more play out of Fable Two. Oh, I, it, I played Fable Two a lot more. Ultimately, I think I have definitely had more play out of Two than I have out of Three. But Two is definitely the shorter game if you're just bum rushing. Yeah, I mean, it, it literally felt to me Fable Three was just over in a blink of an eye. There was so much potential, so much more I felt they could have done with the storyline. With when when you started the rebellion, there was so much more that could that was potentially have done. Even when you became king. The choices were over like that, and even even right at the end, because I managed to say um, finish the game without a single survivor uh, person dying, and still have money to um, save the bronzes. save the kingdom. The amount of hours I spent blacksmithing, I don't even want to go there. But when I'd done it, no one gave a shit. I felt little to no reward after completing that game, or busting my ass. I mean, to be honest, I've not actually. That's that's the one. That's probably the. I think it's like the one achievement on Fable Three I don't actually have is is managing to do, you know, to keep everyone alive as well as yeah, as well as fulfill, you know, as well as keeping all my promises. Um, but but I mean, I, I enjoyed the game. I did enjoy it. It was just a disappointment. I just felt there's something missing. There's more they could have done. There's more that I was expecting to happen, and it boils down to the hype. To me, it boils down to the hype of, well, if this game wasn't hyped up so much, if this, you know, and it, you know, it's not, it's not just the devs maybe that you've got to blame, but you know, you can blame the community as well because I myself was hyping up for myself, expect, thinking this game's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be awesome, um, you know. So even even jumping on the hype train, I don't, I don't think that's uh, personally a good Always thing. I think look thing. forward to it, but in my opinion, like. Look, Going back to Shadows of Mordor, that's something I should, as a Lord of the Rings fan, be horrendously looking forward to, because it's a Lord of the Rings game. But, at the same time, I'm not wanting to jump on the bandwagon so much, just in case it is a disappointment. Just in case I am broken hearted by it. A little bit sad. Yeah. Just cry yourself to sleep every night. Yep. I mean, I found, I found, this, I found a very similar story with Bioshock 2, actually, where Bioshock 1, one of my favourite games Phenomenal ever. Phenomenal game. Love that game. But then, like, 2 came out, and I was just like, man, you get to play as a big daddy, you get to drill people in the face, like, you get your own little sister, like, how fucking sick is this going to be? And then I played it, and I was like, yeah, that was really, really good, I really enjoyed that. But it still sort of felt a little bit dead inside, because I sort of, I, I, I'd worked, I was just, I was expecting Bioshock 1 all over again, but as a yeah. big daddy, and just... Yeah. And just ultimately was disappointed by it. Yeah, it was. It definitely wasn't as good as Bioshock One, but mechanically, gameplay-wise, I thought yeah, it was ten better. times better. I like, I like a the lot dual better. wielding. The dual wielding actually makes the game so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Just little things. Um, yeah. Ashton, like, well, anything? Any your two cents? For for me, I've never really been like a kind of person that is. I don't know. Hype isn't a big thing for me because I I don't really hear much about these things. The 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 way I hear about games is like word of mouth because you know. It's I'm the best not... way. Stay ignorant to the to the. Uh... Stay ignorant. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not on to the industry. I'm not on like 
Twitter or, or any kind of website that like you can read about games. I don't really watch TV, which will advertise games for me. I just kind of hear about a game from me, and I'll be like, okay, yeah, I'll check that out. Like, I'll watch a trailer for it, um, and then I'll think, yeah, I will like or won't like this game. And for me, the games that I'm hyped for are the games that haven't released much, because yeah, I, like for example, there's there's two games that I was that like were the, the trailer kind of things released pretty similar close times to each other uh tom clancy's the division and dying light and these tom clancy's the division looks amazing very good i I love my i love my i love my clancy games i've I've said several times but like these these two games were released like uh, like the trailers released really close together and both of which i was there like i really really want to play these games but tom clancy's when they released it they released like a, a weather kind of system like had the um the like the world that it's in and the uh the the new frostbite engine and like you got to see a bit of the world and then they released a gameplay trailer and that's pretty much it they may have released a little bit more than that but i, I haven't really seen that much more and that's got me really excited but for dying light a game that i was really excited for They've released so many trailers for it, so many gameplay, so many, like, just, like, teaser or whatever. And I've just gotten bored of it before I've even started playing. Yeah. So there's kind of a a limit of the hype and the anticipation of what it's going to be like kind of thing. I've 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 seen everything already. Several several examples of it, because I I personally think hype can also accumulate to the be all or end all of the game of a game it can it can be the one thing that you know if it lives up to the hype such as destiny i mean has destiny lived up to the hype um uh, you know it, it, if it does great if it doesn't then that could that could be it that could be the end of the game yeah. one more one very recent example which is which i've just thought of um watchdogs wow yeah shit I mean, the amount of hype that was behind that game, the amount of people that were thinking this game is going to be awesome, it's going to be groundbreaking. Half the stuff that we saw in the trailer, couldn't even do the game. A three all those years ago wasn't even in the finished fucking game. Mm. I mean, how disappointing is that for one? But that game is just that was it. It was that was destroyed by hype. There is there is one actually. There is a a constant game, and I mean, it, it is a usual suspect. But it is totally the opposite of this. A game that always has a fucking massive hype around it, but never ever lives up to expectations, is Call of Duty. Yeah. Every single year. Every single time, yeah. Every single time. It is the most fucking disappointing and dull game every year, but it's... flies off the shelves because it's because they don't do anything groundbreaking. It's the same damn game. Magic marketing mix of just... Get get your uh, get your Kevin Spacey. Get him yeah. to do a voiceover. Give some <laughs> give some people some big big guns to play with at Explosions. sixty frames a second. Off Think about it. Every yeah. single year, someone says, "Oh, I'm not going to buy the next." The new Call of Duty. I've done it before. Bam. Next I've year, it. get it. I've done. I have done it. Well, I haven't. I haven't bought Call of Duty for ages, but I have done it before. Where I'm just like, you know what? Not buying Call of Duty ever again. It was terrible last. And then, and last Call of Duty game I bought was Modern Warfare 2. I'm playing it. I'm like, well, shit. I think, I'm a yeah. sellout. <laughs> like, Advanced Warfare is the first one that I can can say that it has revived it. Because since, I'd say, COD 4. COD 4 was great. COD 5, pretty much the same. Uh, and then just kind of from then on, it was just all the same thing with like added a couple more perks but advanced warfare is the first one i can say that they have changed a lot more because of the movement you can jump twice as high you can straight really fast and obviously it's the same kind of game but it's the first big change that they've made for such a long time that i reckon it will sell good for a for a decent reason instead of just being a call of duty game well we'll see if it lives up to the hype that's Probably true. not, but yeah, no, you know, you know, but, IGN, IGN are going to give it nine, oh you know, God. nine out of ten, and yeah, and but that's games, because but... they're in their pocket. Well, so, but I mean, it's... like one one huge example which I I'm deeply affected by and will be, um, 
just to talk about Hype, is a game that was announced in 2006, which has been in development hell ever since. Um, now, th- this this game is um, it's uh, it's Final Fantasy 15. So when when this when this game was announced in 2006, it was meant to be part of the Final Fantasy 13 Nova Crystallis series, along with Final Fantasy 13, which we all know was an amazing game. That's sarcasm. Um, Agito 13 and Versus 13, which is what 15 is now. Um, now since since then, obviously we've had 13 and we've had some phenomenal sequels to 13. 13 2 and oh the amazing lightning returns can you tell my sarcasm square enix fans come at me um, your tongue, Rob. <laughs> i'm foaming at the mouth with rage um and then agito 13 what it kind of went through some changes it became type zero uh, final fantasy type zero in an attempt to separate itself from the um with the the mess of 13 the very mixed mixedly received 13 um but since then has come out only in japan however um agito 13 agito was a game as well which came out it's very confusing i do apologize i'm trying to explain it in the best way possible but agito was a mobile game so anyway type zero is out it was out on psp or ps vita one of the two um and we've been waiting for it to be released in the west for about two years now i think um, it was announced this year at E3 that they are bringing it to the West in the form of a PS4 and X-Bone game. So we're going to get it on consoles, which is awesome. you know. And there's been a lot of people, including myself, which have been campaigning for that game to be brought out to the West. Finally, it's, been, it's happening. We're very happy. Um, but hopefully it will live up to the hype. <laughs> Don't know. Um, but it's got very good reviews. So That's it's done. Always it's good done, to hear. Yeah, it's done very well in Japan, and what I hear of it, it's very reminiscent of previous Final Fantasy titles, which is a godsend because a lot of us want it want it to go back to the glory days, the PS1 days. Um, so anyway, you young whippersnappers, not remembering. So uh, versus PS1. thirteen, versus thirteen was cancelled uh, a year or two ago. Outrage. Bearing in mind we've had like one or two trailers from it in that in that time frame, it has been so much hype about it. We literally know nothing about this game, nothing. Square Enix have kept it so close to their chests; it's unbelievable. We know nothing of this game, um, yet it's got so much hype around it. Probably because Thirteen had such a mixed reception, people are hoping that this will be the game that will change everything. This will be the one that should have been released. Um, so anyway, it was cancelled, then it was brought back as 15, or re, re, redesigned as 15, or whatever, um, and we've been having slowly sort of information drip fed to us, but hopefully we'll have it next year or the year after. Still, yeah, still in development hell. Um, but this is a game that's got so much hype around it, so much really falls on this game to be good. I'm talk- I, I'd imagine you mean from the from the point of view of the community, because to be honest, like Final Fantasy, like the last Final Fantasy game I was aware that actually came out, and, I'm, and this is, this is dreadful. It's probably actually Final Fantasy 13. Like that is the last Final Fantasy game I remember, like hearing, come out. Like Final Fantasy. Obviously, I know that Final Fantasy has a very sort of like die-hard community, like a it very, does, a very, yeah. very like close fan base. Yeah. But like to your sort of like average gamer Joe like myself, who doesn't really do much in the way of special. It's definitely a niche, but at the same time, it's a huge niche. Yeah, it's it's, it's really odd. It's it's you know, yeah. like you'd be you'd be a fucking idiot if if that you were into games and somebody said, oh yeah, have you heard? heard of Final Fantasy and you went, no, what, sorry, what? Yeah, like, yeah. But, but, like, that doesn't mean, like, you know, I don't play Final Fantasy. If you, if, I mean, if you like, go, like, oh, what would you think is the best one? I'd be like, mm, fucking no. Yeah, but, I mean, I, speaking of someone who's a Final Fantasy fan, um, it's safe to say, if you follow my channel, you know my opinions on 13. I'm not afraid to say them. But I'm happy to have um, healthy debate with you about it, um, which is something a lot of people who have um, not agreed with my um uh, opinion. Opinion. That's the word. Well, um, have have not English. really wanted to engage in, but whatever. Um, but it's safe to say, and any any fan can say this. It's safe to say that thirteen had mixed opinions. It had a very mixed reception and reviews. Um, 
And verses 13, well now 15, Final Fantasy 15, really for a lot of fans, including myself, is the be-all or end-all of this franchise. Is the be-all or end-all for me with this series with Square Enix. And there's a lot of hype surrounding it. Bearing in mind we don't really know a lot about this game at all. But there's so much hype around it. There's so many people thinking, right, well 13 was a piece of shit. Hopefully 15 will change that. Hopefully 15 will be the game we should have got. What happened to 14? Sorry. 14 was an MMO. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that, just that, to clarify. That, there's a funny story there. Because when it first came out in, I think, 2010, the game was shit. The game was absolute garbage. But about a year later, um, a few people at Square Enix decided to take it back under their wing and fix it and repair it. And to be perfectly honest, and all fairness to them, it's probably been the best thing I've seen in gaming of many recent years, where they've literally said, we fucked up, but as an apology, we're going to fucking fix it for you. And fix it they have. The game's doing very, very well. Totally, totally reborn, totally redone. It's doing very well. Doing very well. That's actually very, very... Um... That's very, very like heartening to hear that, yeah. that, that somebody actually went, you know what, we done gone fucked up, yeah. like, and let's it, fix it. It's even more surprising for Square Enix to do that and say, yeah. because... It, I mean, to be honest, like, Square Enix for me are actually kind of on par with the evilness of EA. A little bit, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's I kind think of like... They're, with, they're the, they're, along with Capcom, maybe, they're probably yeah, no, the Capcom EA of evil. Japan. Capcom yeah. are pretty evil. Which hurts me to say, because I do like Square Enix, but... I don't mind but the no, that's been style. the best thing I've seen. That you know, for them to actually do that, and then that's amazing. A lot of a lot of a lot of publishers or developers would just oh, be you like, well, "Fucked up, fuck it, that? let's you do it again." Activision doing that. Yeah. Fuck, sorry, guys, we fucked this Call of Duty up. Let's uh, bring it back and make it. Yeah. No. Never happen. Not in but there's years. so much hype surrounding 15. If it if it is shit, if it doesn't live up to the hype, um. That's going to be the be all or end all for a lot of fans, a lot of people, and I think possibly the be all or end all of Square Enix. Well, it, well, like, are we talking just like literally you just walking away from this franchise that you've been sort of involved with for, you know, and the majority and, of and your Square sort of like gaming, your gaming yeah. life? Well, not no. I I, I got um I, I've only I only got into Final Fantasy te- uh, Final Fantasy in uh, 2010, so okay. I've only been a fan for four years. But in that four years, it's kind of been a huge part Big part of your gaming sort of yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I genuinely think as well it's probably going to be the be all or end all of Square Enix. Really? Or it's definitely going to help, yeah, because the, the game's been in development for nigh on eight, nine years. There's been so much money put into it to, it to like... develop this game. Yeah, it's going to be a huge loss. To be fair, like actually another game very, very similar to that that people needed. You know that the company needed it to live up, and it just. You know, we we ridicule it like you know it was five pounds within the week that it was released, like in the pre-owned section of the of the game, and it was Duke Nukem Forever. Oh That's god, so true. fuck! Like, you know, they, you, they just needed that game to work, and work it did not. <laughs> like, yeah. See, with with hype, there is it, it is really bad, but at the same time, not very controllable for things like yeah, no, it's true. Like. For example, Fallout 4 and Half-Life 3, games that haven't really been announced, have so much hype, and they've got so much pressure on them to do really well. Yeah. Like, but the 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 publishers and the game makers, they have no control over it. Yeah, no, it's true. They're, they're, they're not always like... they're not always to blame. That's very true. So, sorry, you're going to get bored of it. But going back to 15, Final Fantasy 15, Square Enix have not hyped that at all. There's bit we've had little to nothing from that game. Not even not not even not even them saying, "Oh, uh, we're still working on it. It's going really well." Not not even that. Not, barely any trailers. Barely any news. It's literally the fan base that is heralding this as uh, you know a, a, as as the most amazing game ever. Um, but I will be honest with the, their previous track record with the series. Anyway, regardless of that hype this game will be the be all or end all for me for this series. But you're, you're very right, Ashton. Fans are also, you know, the, probably the, the worst nightmare to developers with, with regards to hype. 
because it puts an enormous amount of pressure on their shoulders to make a game that stands up to hype they've not even created. So true. We're, we're, to be fair, we are our own worst enemies as players. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, like, you know, you know, like, obviously, we, we, you know, we don't expect, like, we, we've just grown to know that, like, um, let's just try and think of, like, a really good example of this. Um, let's say something like Battlefield. Yeah. So, like, Battlefield 3, in all fairness, it, you know, it was, it was on the money. It, it delivered the game that DICE had promised. Yeah. That was going to be delivered. And then, like, obviously, lots of the sort of Call of Duty fan base as well got wind of how, like, you, you know, how much of a really good game Battlefield 3 is, like. And so, and so when Battlefield 4 comes out, like, obviously, it's a shooter, FPSs, they're always, you know, they're always pretty loud and obnoxious when they're when they're shouting out but you know the majority of the the hype that i got from battlefield 4 and a lot of the the feedback and a lot of the people saying you know a lot of people saying oh man battlefield 4 is fucking dire are actually lots of the people that were heralding it as just the best thing since sliced bread yeah like it, you know it, it, it comes back to bite you in the ass because you're it just like oh man, this game this game's gonna be fucking incredible this game's gonna be amazing this game's you know the best oh, oh wait no never mind like but I mean, go, go, going, you know. going back to the Fable Three, like I mean, obviously Peter Molyneux, I, I, I think, and he, I'm not the only one that I think believes this, but I think Peter Molyneux is the worst thing to have ever happened to Fable, because um, the amount of hype that he he created, he's and a big personality, isn't he? Yeah, but the amount of hype he created then passed on to the fans. Me being one of them, I was a fool for it. I definitely got on that bandwagon, that hype train. Without a shadow of a doubt, I did, and it probably ultimately uh, affected my opinion of the game in th thinking that it was a disappointment. Although, let's be honest, I think on 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 the Paper. large scale, it is heralded as a massive disappointment. Fable Three, um, but since that, I since that, I've not wanted to involve myself or jump on any sort of hype train. I'll look forward to a game. I'll think, yeah, that looks really awesome. I can't wait to play that. But at the same time, I try and distance myself as much as possible. And trying to think rationally. And that's why with a lot of things, I, I wait for a game to be released instead of buying it day one or pre-ordering it. I wait for it to be released, see what the reviews are like, and then think, yeah, it seems that it's lived up to some sort of expectation and hype. I'll pick that up. No, I mean, this is exactly what you said to me about Shadows, wasn't it? Like, yeah, obviously, Shadow Lord, of Lord of the Rings IP, you know, you know, you should be on that, like... God yeah, I should what, be, but, like, but I'm I'm wanting to scared. distance myself from it I in case I'm so disappointed by it. Yeah. Fable has indeed frightened you, dear. I mean, is is there anything like that that's uh, you think's affected you, Ashton, at all? I mean, obviously you say uh, you're not you're not massively into getting onto the hype trains, but I don't know. I suppose what we said before watchdogs was something that was hyped for me um yeah i never actually ended up getting it because i just heard it was bad yeah um it's not, it's not here actually lucky, lucky then really in a sense it's the it's the kind of thing that I, I haven't with many games i haven't ever bought them on the release date i've kind of waited to see the reviews before i actually go out and buy it because yeah. even even if i am really hyped for a game it's still something that is still a lot of money for something so you know i kind of want to let other people test it for me the yeah the people who do like ign who'll give it a rating if it's a good rating they'll be like yeah i will go out and buy it but otherwise if it's a game that i'm not that bothered for i'll just wait till it goes down in price a bit and then get it then yeah it's probably still a good game i mean there's there's nothing of the past couple of years really that i've i've aside from not having the fucking money to do it, um, be, been able to buy a game on day one that it's been released. Um, the, lo the last game that I bought on day one release was um, Final Fantasy X HD. But that's because that's a game that I know I've played, I love and enjoy. And that game's been out for nearly 10 years. Um, so re really that was... That's not a questionable purchase, really, um, unless you've got a problem with HD remasters. But before that, the last game I remember buying on day one was Left 4 Dead 2. And that was how many years ago was that? Um, many, many years ago. Exactly. But still um, a game. F f I, I think it's a great game, phenomenal game. And I wasn't disappointed with that day one purchase, not at all. 
Um, but I think since then, since being a little bit more aware, a little bit wiser, I suppose, to the gaming industry, and now myself, I suppose, being a part of it, as, as little as I am, um, I can kind of see and think, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the reviews to come out. I'm going to wait for people's opinions to circulate. And I'm going to see if this game is worth my time. Yeah. I totally, I, no, I totally agree with that. I mean, I, I think the last game that I bought, day one, I mean, I'm just going to have a quick look at my my Xbox uh, shelf and just see. I mean... Splinter Cell Conviction... Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, if not, it, it, the game before that, like, if if I didn't get Spent Cell Conviction on release day, the last game that I bought on day one was Halo Reach. That was the last game I bought on day one. Wow. That that's a long time ago. It's at least what four, yeah. three. Well, four I was years in old. high school. I was in high yeah. school when I did it. I my my friend came over. We'd spent the whole day together. We went to the movies, and then we went and picked it up at midnight. Yeah. And that, that was the, that was the first that that was the first one I I did. Yeah. I think the only games that I've ever got either on release or or pretty soon afterwards are games not that I've been mega excited for, but games that have been multiplayer and a lot. I know a lot of my friends are getting them. Yeah. It's the kind of thing that even if it's not the best game in the world, as long as you're playing with a load of your mates, it's still great. It's going to be great. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what makes a game, in a sense, especially games like that. You see a lot of people doing it with, you know, even MMOs. If... Um Guild Wars 2, I know that Nick, who has joined us on the podcast before, he bought Guild Wars 2, I think, on, on day one. Um, but that was because he knew a lot of his friends were going to get it. I mean, he was sort of involved on the hype train a little bit there as well. And I think it has lived up to the hype train, Guild Wars 2. It's the community still there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's not it's not wholly groundbreaking, I suppose, to the MMO, but it's done a lot of things differently and a lot of those things really well, um, which I think more MMOs should look at and take on. But he he, he was one that I know definitely bought uh, Guild Wars 2 and part I think part of what made that decision for him was that a lot of his friends were getting involved on it. Well, I mean, for me personally, like the, the reason that I tend to play a lot of things like Magic the Gathering, the reason that I play board games the reason that i do a lot of my gaming traditionally is it is all about your community it's yeah you know like i mean like you and myself rob are fortunate enough to have a an absolutely fantastic little like f like almost like family of, of yeah. people who just who just really 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 enjoy getting together like three or four times a week and just and just playing some games and having a laugh and i think for me that is more important than any 10 star review on a single yeah. player game it's just being able to sit down with your mates and just go, I'll tell you what, actually, Rob, I'll play that game of magic with you and show you, like, some yeah. new things. Or you teach me, like, you know. Yeah. And, like, yeah, that, you know, that'll that be, that'll of, be the like, day. Learning, that learning process, like, yeah. uh, you know, as you go through together and as you break new as you break new cards or as you, yeah. as you learn new strategies for yeah. like, risk or, you know, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. That's the reason that... that always keeps me coming back and back and back to that traditional setting versus... I mean, that, that was, that was even one setting. thing going back again. World of Warcraft. Yeah. I played that game seven years on and off. I mean, that was the one thing that made me come back because, I'll be honest, I did get a little bit bored of World of Warcraft. It, you know, it becomes a little bit of a grind and then when you get closer to end game content, all that there is really to do is PvP. And I'm not greatly interested in PvP. I'd much rather do a dungeon, but even then, that was a bit difficult to get a group together and do. But the one thing that constantly brought me back was, oh, my mate Matt's playing it. I'll go and play with him. Uh, my mate Charlie's playing it. Let's get together and play, you know? And even now, I've I've been done with World of Warcraft for a good four years now, I think. I've not touched it for quite a long time um, and don't intend to, really. But the only thing, the only thing that would bring me back to it and this is this is possibly possibly it's, it wouldn't be definite but the only thing that would bring me back to it is if a group of my friends were playing and it was like let's all just play together let's do some dungeons together let's you know that sort Level of thing up together it's that community stuff. i think i think that's probably the reason that world of warcraft uh, and, and like and, and mmos generally do are still doing well are quite yeah because because you're just like you know 
in exactly the same as what I just said about the traditional stuff. It's like, you know, you go on, you log on to your guild and everyone knows who you are. And like, everyone's like, oh, how's your day been? And you're like, yeah, it's been great. Thanks. Do you want to go, you know, do you want to go run that dungeon like one more time and, and it, see what this, happens? This, this is another thing as well, why it's really difficult for new MMOs to do well is is simply because a lot of people are of, of, of playing WoW and they have played WoW and they've got their community on there, they've got their um, character, that you know, they've got everything they want in that game and it's all there. And it's kind of difficult to start a new MMO with starting from scratch, starting from the beginning, doing really the same sort of things you've already done in World of Warcraft but you're going to do in another game. And even trying to say, hey, you know my community do you want to should we should we play guild wars 2 or should we play this other mmo should i think we move actually over? guild wars 2 is a very bad example because guild wars 1 had a super cult following yeah and the reason yeah. that people migrated up through to guild wars 2 guild wars 2 was because yeah. people were like you know what you know i know that lots of my friends who play guild wars 1 are migrating over to guild wars 2 yeah like even though i know that apparently it kind of cut some boundaries and some people didn't like it etc etc but you know guild wars 2 is a lot it's a lot more of a safer game than it would have been uh had it been star wars the old republic was it yeah the old republic the yeah. old republic well you know or, or you know even even if you've got a huge name for yourself like star wars like your yeah. mmo isn't safe because you just don't have that no that community but th behind this is you this is why you find forwards. a lot of a lot of people just going back going back to wow Fuck this! I've already done this. I've already done this shit, and I, you know, I go back to WoW. Or the community's not here. My community's not here. I've got, a, you know, I've got, I've got a name for myself. I'm gonna go back to WoW. Yeah, no, I, t I do totally agree with you there. I mean, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I suppose round rounding things up, um, hype. Uh, can be good, can be bad. Generally falling in the in the latter category. I mean, sometimes. I think I think sometimes like the a game that lives up to the hype, like something like Grand Theft Auto Five, that like or Destiny that lived up to the hype. I, I I guess it's it's a really really good feeling when you've been wanting something to work for so long and then it does and it's beautiful. Yeah. But you know I think it's um it's more of a pitfall than it is than it is your friend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's probably the best way to to sum it up there, Josh. So yeah. Uh... That's uh, definitely agree. Definitely agree. Okay, so we uh, is there anything else we want to add on the topic or the subject, or are we good to sort of move things on and finish up the podcast? Um, I'm happy to move things on if, if yeah. you guys are good. Yeah, I'm happy to move. Yeah. Things on. Okay. Well, uh, great conversation, guys. Really good. Thank you very much. I think. Sure. Um, so yeah, I suppose rounding things up and ending the podcast as we always do with um, this month's or next month's releases. Releases for the month of October. Tuba. of which there's quite a fucking lot yeah there's a lot actually shit there is a <laughs> damn lot i mean I'm, only, I'm not gonna pick every single one i'm gonna pick a couple out that are um sort of i think interesting or worth our time um so uh starting things off this month of october as i as I always say that this isn't all this isn't all the releases across all the boards um so there's many that we may have missed out or i haven't got here so um or they may be subject to change, I don't know. But what I've got here on the list. Uh, starting things off on the 3rd of October, we have Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who doesn't love Super Smash Bros. in all fairness? Um, Fucking love sick it if game. It was for other consoles. <laughs> I never, I never, like, I've had my 3DS now for about six months, uh, and I bought it to play with my little, my little gaming group. Um, and I think I've, I think I've played it literally about four times, but I know that everyone's on the Super Smash Bros. hype, and I will definitely be picking it up. And I, you know, I can expect myself playing that for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Actually, just, the just th with thing my is, friends. Just going on the hype of even something like Super Smash Bros. because there is hype around it, no doubt. Um, but you kind of know what you're getting. You it's know what to expect. It's yeah, tried it's tried and tested. tested. So I think hype like that is kind of Fine. normal and. Not disappointing in a sense. Very weird. Anyway, um, so yeah, when I when I get some sort of 3DS, I'll be getting that game. Um, coming up on the 5th of October, we have Skylanders Trap Team, another to the ever-growing franchise of Skylanders. Coming out on the X-Bone, the 360, PS4, PS3, Wii U, Wii, and 3DS. How is Skylanders still a thing? I, just, I, I don't understand. I remember seeing it the first time, and I'm like... 
man, this is so gimmicky. I mean, it's cool, but it's kind of gimmicky. And then, like, and then all of a sudden, like they they keep on releasing them, and I'm like, still, like, I don't understand. I just don't understand, just it. Just understand it. I just don't get it. But because I mean, it makes the money. Because the, the thing is, it's because it's so marketed at children, and you've got the little figures that they want them all. It's just the same thing when Pokemon came out. Yes. yes. Got to yes. catch them all. Got to want all the Skylanders. Just take my money. Thanks, <laughs> Mum. Thanks, Mum. Love you. I mean, to be fair, it's a fucking good business model. Although not fucking bad, shady and evil, it's a good business model. It's not bad at all. <laughs> Um, coming out on the October the 7th, Alien Isolation for the Xbox One, 360, PS4, PS3, and PC. And has that been in development for a while? Because, I mean, Alien have got a lot, well, as a name, have got a lot to live up for as after Colonial well, Marines. Well, yeah, as we all know, Colonial Marines was the biggest flop since floppy things. <laughs> um but Alien Isolation, to be fair, from the trailers I've seen, I've not seen a lot of it, but it did look good, and it, it is kind of what it should be, a More of a survival, survival horror. horror. I so, um, actually played it. Um, I you went, actually played it? Yeah, I went to a Eurogamer. You did, didn't you? Yeah. Saturday, and um, it is really good. It is terrifying, absolutely <laughs> terrifying, and it is, it is really, really hard, at least the game mode I played. But the whole graphics and everything and and just the whole idea behind it that it really is survival and there's no like doing like something as, as little as looking at the scanner um for like to see where the alien is that makes a slight beeping sound that the alien can hear so you can only oh, oh so see you like no, shush, shush, shush. <laughs> and, and so it is, it is absolutely terrifying oh, but that's great what, what did you what did you play it on just out of interest? Um, well, I played it on the Xbox One. Okay. And, um, a couple of my friends played it on the Oculus. Okay. Ooh, wow. Okay. It's, it's Oculus compatible. Nice. Yeah, it wasn't apparently because I went to play the Oculus as well, but they put me on a different game called Lucky's Adventure or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> which, was, which was really good actually. It was amazing. Well, you you could play Alien Isolation, but how about Hello Kitty Island Adventure? <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, it seems more aimed at your age group. Um, yeah. it's, this one's for you. Good. But, <laughs> do, but do, does it... Uh, the, re the only reason I ask is, does it feel like um, a, a, well, what is now current gen? Does it feel like a current gen game? It's... Yes, yes. It's okay. definitely a current gen, gen, gen game, but it is very different to the majority of the games out there at the moment. I think it'll do really well, and I, I don't know if I'm going to get it, though because yeah. it's it's a kind I, of game that I'm not into because it's terrifying. <laughs> I think I think either two things with Alien Isolation it's going to sell really well mm. or because it's, it's because it's an alien game or people are going to be a little bit skeptical for a little while until the reviews really start coming out because of obviously Colonial Marines. Mm. They done fucked it up. They did the thing is, it is, up a little it bit. Is very very different to Colonial Marines and it is an amazing game, and I do think it will do really well. Um, but it is a horror game. It is absolutely just the most terrifying thing. So, and that, that's I really what it should be. It's I very good. That, that's game. very that's very heartening to hear. Cool. Good. Well, well, we shall see. Hopefully, it'll do well. I hope it does well. I do too. Because that that IP definitely needs something good. Mm. Mm. Okay, so uh, also on the 7th, we've got Costume Quest 2 for the Xbox One, 360, PS4, PS3, Wii U, and PC. It's an odd game. I, I have the first Costume Quest. It's uh, Double Fine. Or yeah. at least the first one was. And I remember playing it, and it was just the most surreal thing. It is... I, I'm sorry, do, 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 do excuse me. Carry on. Carry on. Though. It was very surreal. I just I wasn't even sure what on earth was going on, to be honest. It was kind of... You know, yeah, like all of a sudden, sudden you'd, you'd, you'd knock, knock on someone's, someone's door, door and you'd turn into a gigantic robot, robot and then you'd like beat the living crap out of them and steal their candy. candy. I, 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 don't I don't really know. know. I mean, have I mean, you have you actually you played, played um, uh, like any like double, double fine, fine titles, titles Ashton? I, I never have. No, I, I don't really know much about it. Like like Tim Schafer, who's kind of famous. He did like Brutal Legend as well. I think I think he worked on Brutal Legend. Um. He's, no, I've heard much about this. Like, like also like psychonauts. Um, no, I've I've heard of. I've heard it's an amazing. Yeah, I mean like it's a very 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 famous kind of cult title. Um, I mean I'm trying to think of what else like stacking. Do you remember that from the Xbox where you were like little Russian 
um, bassinet dolls, and you'd like you have to like solve puzzles, and you like you're like a really tiny little bassinet doll, and you have to like hop into like other people's like bodies. Oh right. In, like, like so, like you know, you'd need. Um, you know, you'd, you'd need, need to be, to be a, waitress a waitress to get into the kitchen, kitchen so you'd, you'd run up behind a waitress, a waitress and then you'd, like, you know, you know jump, jump into her body and then you'd get into the kitchen, kitchen because you needed to, like, poison, poison someone's food, food or whatever, whatever and then you'd hop out of the waitress, waitress and then into the chef the and then, like, do whatever you're doing as the chef and then and then back into the waitress to take it to the table and then back out. It was it was really, really, really odd. Yeah, it does sound odd. But, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I always wanted to play it, and I never really got around to it. Um, it's kind of we're kind of going a little bit off topic, but I've got yeah. a costume quest on Steam, and it was it was a little bit weird. Um, I, I'm I'm a bit skeptical about the second one to be honest. Maybe I need to re-download it again, how I've got my computer, and I'm not playing it on a crappy little laptop, and just see if I can get my head around it. Yeah, that might be. Try it again. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is, is has Rob come back? Yep, I'm back. Hello. Sorry. Um, so, yeah. Um, ready to move on? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, on the same day as well, we've got Drive Club for the PS4. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not really into racing games. This isn't, yep. this isn't no, really my forte. Really. Um, and again, on the same day, we have Minecraft PS4 edition. We finally yeah. got there. Yeah, well, it was a little bit, little bit funny seeing as Microsoft has obviously um, bought Quite Mojang. Mojang yeah. So, it, it, you know, it makes me wonder... After this, are they going to bother? Like, if if say Minecraft PS4 edition needs updates, are they going to bother? I'd just be like, nah. no idea. Nah. <laughs> no, because they are a massive competitor, obviously Sony and Microsoft. But yeah. we said if 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 Microsoft can make Sony pay for the IP, then go yeah. for it. I guess. Like, yeah. Why not? Okay. Um. Again, on the, there's a lot coming out on the seventh. Like a lot. Um. We've got Project Spark. So I've got Project One Spark, I've got Project Start, uh, Spark listed. Yeah, the tenth. Yeah, tenth. Yeah, oh, the tenth. Okay. Um, um, it looks enough. interesting. It's free, isn't it? Free for PS4. Xbox One. Oh, Xbox, uh, Xbox One. One only. I think you find. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember seeing it at E. Was it at E3 this year or E3 last year? And it was the one where you made your own world, wasn't it? Was that Project yeah. Spark? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it looked a so good. Thing, but making games or making worlds and stuff it does look really interesting yeah, it does look very very uh it looks a bit surreal though i guess mm. and i think it's free i think it's free really yeah um, for, uh, xbox one is download free and um and i, I take you can buy a hard copy for whatever reason yeah, yeah. okay so um 10th of october uh we have rise pc edition no. yeah <laughs> I hope for you rise. guys Hope you guys like quick time events. Um, yeah, I, I, the the concept of the game actually very much interests me. I'm sort of very much into my like Greco cool. Greco Roman like history and things. But um, yeah, I remember seeing that and just looking at the combat system, just being like, this would annoy the hell out of me. It it wasn't great. It wasn't great. I mean, maybe they've made some slight alterations for the uh, for the. I doubt PC. it. I doubt it, but we'll see. But I doubt it. Doubt it as well. But... Okay, no, on the fourteenth of October, a game that's um, got, uh, I suppose, got hype, some hype behind it, or it's anticipated quite well. It's a Borderlands, the pre-sequel for PS3, 360, and a PC. Uh, uh, anyone a Borderlands player? Uh, I've yeah. played Borderlands One. I've not played Borderlands Two. My brother is really, really into Borderlands Two. He says it's really, really good. Um, I played Borderlands One a little while, but I think it was much better when you had people to play with. Yeah, and I just never really did. But I mean, I I, I enjoyed what I, I certainly enjoyed what I played of it, and it's it's very very funny, and I really really like cel shaded, like graphic styles and stuff. Well, as, so as, as a franchise, as a series, it's done quite well, really. It's very very well, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love the Borderlands games. Probably would like, oh, absolutely Borderlands One and Borderlands Two, both amazing games. But the pre sequel cool, I haven't been that interested in. Just you're just a bit tedious of the hype train, are you? I just think because, like, it's come out so soon after Borderlands 2, and just the fact it, it doesn't seem like, it just seems like a filler between Borderlands 2 and 3. Yeah, I, th even, I think, I think it gen. is more of a filler, because they've yeah. said it's this isn't like a proper sequel, or a, you know, a, mm. a proper game in the, in the series. It, it is, a I don't know. Alone. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't reckon it, it'll do amazing, but I think it will be a, a good game. Just is it something of... you probably it, see yourself picking up when well. it's but you find it cheap? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like I was about to say, I don't think it's going to review particularly brilliantly somehow. I have a feeling it'll sell well, it won't review well, and then if you bought it on day one, I have a feeling you might be slightly not not disappointed. I think disappointed is the wrong word, but slightly that kind of like that destiny feel of sort of yeah it was a good game but i kind of want more yeah yeah like i have a feeling that that's that's kind of where i'm sat with that game really i think they have covered their tracks well because they have said like 2k studios they've been like it isn't it isn't the next game it isn't borderlands 3 this is kind of the filler and they have it's a 3.5 or 2.5 or whatever yeah so i mean like, another thing is it's also not even available on your uh, your next gens either so yeah, i mean that's, yeah. that's probably quite a good indicator of whether it's um whether mm. they're taking it in to well not that they're not taking it entirely seriously but you know they've got a good idea of what they're sort of aiming for but i mean i mean i don't know how much they're planning to sell it for but hopefully it will be a decent decent game standalone game for the price they sell it for and not just what is a, what would essentially be or could be classed as overpriced dlc 31.99 for the xbox one and 31.99 for the playstation okay. 3 because obviously we've had things like uh, in the in the like last couple of months me uh, metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain which was oh, a God, full yeah. priced game it's like five hours long wasn't we, it uh, not even that barely that it was there was nothing of the game Absolutely nothing. No way. Really so anyway, on the uh, on the fourteenth as well, we have the Evil Within uh, for the Xbox One, three sixty, PS four, PS three, and PC, which is a game I've heard nothing good about at all. Really? Yeah. I'm not. I, I I did watch a, a couple of trailers and stuff when I was brushing up my um my knowledge of like E three before I did the first podcast that I came on. Um, yeah. And I can't say I was impressed with what I saw. Um, there's literally pe people who I who I know of that have played it and that um, they've had nothing good mm. really to say about it. When I, uh, Eurogamer, when I didn't actually play it, but my friends did, and they just said it was all right, and it was a bit more gruesome than scary, and it was just kind of a average game like yeah, yeah had a bit because i mean i know bethesda are publishing it which breaks my heart because i love bethesda mm. but they, they're really pushing it they're really pushing this game to be amazing and awesome um but, but at the same time no one's kind of on the bandwagon about it really because it's just seems very very it, it's, it's just the game seems as, as your friends have just said it's just average the mm. game seems very un bethesda esque as well like it doesn't it doesn't fit with the sort of games that bethesda normally publish yeah, I don't think or all like develop or, or have that you know have their hand in. Like I don't think that like you know Bethesda are a brilliant company for many different reasons, but I think I think horror maybe isn't their forte. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, moving on to October the sixteenth, we've got the Fable Legends beta for Xbox One. Um, I've actually not heard anything about this at all. Apparently it's been doing quite well. There's a lot of people that are quite impressed with it. It's quite fun. But um, it's for me, it's not enough for me to want to buy an Xbox One and get into Fable again. It's not the Fable game I want to play. I've never been, really been a Fable fan, so yeah. I haven't heard much about it. It's a, it's a bit of a... Um, I don't know if you guys know Dungeon Land, which is a, a free-to-play Steam game now. Um, where basically there's sort of four, I think four or five of you, and uh, essentially one of you plays the evil villain, and um, the other the other four or three players play the heroes and sort of go around a dungeon essentially, um, and the villain tries to stop them, essentially is is what what happens, and the the heroes have to battle out, um, and gradually go towards defeating the villain. It's like quite a, a fun little concept, right. something cool that you could play with your friends and enjoy. Um, but for me, it's not enough to for me to want to buy an Xbox One and play a Fable game. Yeah, true that. Okay, so uh, moving on, we've got uh, October the 24th. I think this is subject to change, though, this game, or has been changed. I don't know. Um, sorry if this is a little out of date, but Bayonetta 2 for the Wii U. Bayonetta always seemed to me like it was a Wii game. 
Sounds really, really yeah. silly to say, but it always seemed like it was a Wii game to me. Like, uh, it, it always very, it always felt very, very, very. Yeah, I do understand what you mean there. No, it always felt very Nintendo. Yeah. Well, they've got it now, and um, see what they do with it, I suppose. Um, and October the twenty fourth, we've got Civilization Beyond Earth for the PC. Um, I mean, like Civ Five was one of those games that I bought on my, you know, ye old Steam library story, but etc. Uh, etc. Et uh, and it's a game I, I'm yet to actually learn how to play. I'm dreadful at it. Uh, my only. It's definitely a game I want to get into. I'd like to play. Yeah, it's a game I'd very much like to play, but I think I need someone to show me how. Um, but I think Beyond Earth <laughs> kind of just gives you access. I don't know if it's an entirely separate game, but it probably gives you access to some alien tech and alien I think races. It, I think it is a totally separate game, but it, it, basically it's Civ yeah, 5 in space. Spin. Yeah, a bit But I think it spin. is a separate game. I don't think it's like a DLC type Yeah, add-on. I mean, I think, it, I think it's like 30 quid on Steam, so it's got to be a full game. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. you know, Civ players are very, very sort of diehard. Um, yeah. Anyway, I guess. So. Yeah. Okay, so we've also got, on the same date, we've got Fantasy Life for the 3DS, which is a game that's had a fair bit of um, excitement and hype around it. It's, it's kind of like, what I, I can't remember how... Um, I think our friend Ethan yeah. um, said was it, it was, was a, cro- a bit of a cross between uh, Animal Pokemon? Crossing... It was, oh yeah, it was Animal Crossing and, and Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy, yeah. I was, I was trying to think of how Ethan explained it, but yeah. I, can't, I can't remember if it was an, or if it was either Animal Crossing and Final or Fantasy Harvest or like Moon. Pokemon and yeah, no, it was definitely it was definitely Animal Crossing. You're definitely yeah. right. But it looks like an interesting concept, an interesting game, and I think it's going to do quite well because there's quite a lot of um, anticipation and hype around it. Yeah, agreed. Um, and again, on the same day, we've got uh, Pokemon Art Academy for the 3DS. Any of you budding Pokemon artists out there? Never going to happen. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, no. I mean, I, I, you know, if you know me, you sort of know my stance on Pokemon. I, I'm sort of a 150 only kind of kid, really. Like, I don't really. My interest, my interest, sort of stopped there when I was about 12 years old. So, Fair and it enough. just kind of, it just kind of never, it never really blossomed again. I mean, lots of people have, lots of people I know have a lot of fun with Pokemon playing trading cards and playing um, yeah. and playing the actual game and like breeding their Pokemon to like perfection and blah 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 but it's it's never really been something I mean, for me. I'm, I'm, I'm still still loving the Pokemons um, yeah, no. but uh, it, it's something that I have, have fallen out of since I was a kid definitely the last Pokemon game I bought was uh, Sapphire after that I was kind of done with the series for you know just for the lack of, of sort of growing up and thinking oh it's for kids and also the games after that the Pokemon were a bit shit yeah I, I, um, what was that one that we like I mean me and you got together a good while ago now it's probably three or four it was probably just after your trip back from Mallorca and we were talking about um, the, like that Pokemon that's a keychain and yeah. a Pokemon that's an ice cream and, and just, a fucking piece of garbage a piece, yeah a piece of rubbish yeah um just running what the fuck of, you know, at Game very... Freak are you doing yeah but yeah. I gotta say with, with uh, the hype that was around X and Y certainly I did get a little bit excited it, no it's... it certainly lived up to the hype from what I know I mean yeah. like there's a lot of friend, people still playing it our friend Alex has collected every single Pokemon on yeah. the game like and you know he probably wouldn't have bothered if he thought the game was a bit crap so it's, de- it's definitely on my list of 3DS games to get once I get a 3DS, 3DS. yeah <laughs> I mean, I, long, I might, I might give it a others. chance. I mean, first first one on my list is Smash Bros. I mean, I've already got Mario Kart. Yeah. So that's good enough for me. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then we've got on the moving on the twenty eighth. We have got Lords of the Fallen, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Lords of the Fallen. I think it's a bit of a Dark Souls esque game. I'm just gonna have a quick. Uh, it's not actually on the list that I'm looking at about um games coming out. Okay. This month, I'm just trying to work out. So yeah, no, you're right. It's a kind of a hack and slasher. Uh, Dark Souls esque clone. It's Bandai Namco. Yeah. Okay. So um, you take on the role of Hocken, who a convicted criminal whose sins are visible in his face in the form of runes. The world's rulers are banished to uh, are working to banish all evil from humans. And I'm guessing the principle is he tries to s- tries to like redeem himself and and con you know and save the humans from being you know he, it's more of an anti-hero kind of esque game than yeah. a hero kind of okay. game. Okay. Cool. 
Okay, well, moving on. Um, on the same day, we've got um, a game that's, a, again, got a lot of hype around it. For the Xbox One, it's Sunset, Sunset Overdrive. Overdrive. Yeah, I you were about to say that somehow. Oh, someone's very, excited. Yep. Oh, very excited for that. Coming from probably one of my favourite developers, Insomaniac, Ratchet and Clank games, um, Jack and Dax the games. I, yep. I'm so excited for it. Bit sucks that it's only on Xbox One, but it's a, it's a kind of, it's a game that I definitely will be playing. I don't have an Xbox One, but I know my friends are getting one, so I will be around their house all the time. So, it's... you never know; it might get it might get a port to PC, possibly. Yeah, that's true. yeah, maybe. I mean, it's, it's Microsoft. Yeah, it's mm. the sort of thing I can see happening. I mean, like I, I looked at it and like. Anybody who sort of knows me would have thought, oh, you know what, actually, like, that kind of seems right up Josh's street. But, um, just not really. I mean, I looked at it, and I saw it, and I was like, mm, It so looks okay, interesting, it, it looks like, cool, but yeah, I mean, it, it it's looks, nothing it that's really like grasped me. I guess, but it doesn't yeah. particularly look uh, the kind of game that I am. Um, you know, I wouldn't snap by it. I mean, yeah. I, you know, uh, it's the kind of game that I'd wait until it was, like, a tenner and then pick it up. See, yeah. for me, it's kind of a bit of nostalgia because I haven't really played just a, a crazy, cartoony, fun game since probably PS, PS2 and early PS3 because now it, it's all very serious. Serious, scary. yeah. I agree with that. You're totally right. Yeah, so it's kind of going to be a game where I'll play and it'll just be a bit of fun and the storyline will be, I reckon, probably decent. Um, but it won't, it'll be a game that I'll try to kind of go through the story and that'll be it. Um, like the rest of like those kind of games. But it is a game that I've wanted for so long that I just can't wait for. So yeah. Fair enough. Kind of... I mean, it just always, I mean, I know, I know the entire point of it is that it's meant to be a bit daft, but it just, when I looked at it, it just seemed a bit too daft for me like I, I enjoy i enjoy a game that's a bit light-hearted i mean or a little bit tongue-in-cheek or a little bit kind of silly or, or even just like you know because like things like crackdown like i don't take si like seriously in the slightest mm. but like i mean yeah it, it it did just seem a bit much for me kind of like roller skating around like roller coasters and yeah <laughs> yeah like i mean fair enough but I'd much rather they just made another Ratchet and Clank, to be honest. That's true. That is very true. <laughs> well, they're making a movie, aren't they? Are yeah. They? Actually, yeah, I think yeah. so. They're I think making it... a movie, and they're making a reboot of the first Ratchet and Clank game, which oh, hey. movie. Sweet. Hey. Cool. Well, movie tie-ins. Yeah, it could, yeah. It could be maybe a that's, but... maybe that's, Maybe good. that's another... That's probably one for another time, though, to be honest. You could be yeah. on the movie tie-ins for a, a good long while. Oh, God, yeah. Well, anyway, I think that, that's all I've got on my list. Um, anything I think you think I've missed out, Josh? Um, let me just have a quick gander. Honourable mentions. Uh, sorry, just having to do a quick Google. I closed the tab. That's fine. No when is Shadow of Mordor out? It's, it's out. already out. It's already out. It came out the third. Already out. It's coming out a little bit later um, Xbox, for the Xbox 360, 360 and PS3. Um, just because, and fair enough to them, they come out and said it. It's not ready. They they have been having problems with the old gen versions of it. It's good. At least um, at least they've actually said like they've. Come yeah, out at so. least they've actually said and they're actually taking yeah. time to make sure that they're not just throwing out a piece of shit basically. Uh, so, uh. but it's something I, if I do get, which I probably inevitably will, but I, I'm going to wait till I've got a PS4 to play it to get um, it. No, Rob. Personally. Actually, that's that's kind of all I've got on my. Cool. That's that's all I've sort of got on my list that I think is worth talking about. I mean, no obviously there's, there's there's your sort of usual sort of like NBA, yeah, that kind of you know Forza that kind of thing. Yeah, but... Forza Horizon Two, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can talk about that if you want. I mean, it's it, it's it's pretty much a standard racing game, but it... when's, when's it coming out? Forza's since, very realistic. The third since um Forza, Forza uh, since since Need for Speed Most Wanted, I really haven't been interested in racing games but it is it's one of i think it's one of the best racing games out there and never so often i like to indulge in my racing so it, it's something i'm excited for um yeah, I'm, I'm on the uh, i'm on the need for speed underground 2 and uh need for speed most wanted hype still to be honest yeah. like can't get over how good those games were absolutely fantastic game. they were brilliant games so yeah it is it 
with racing, I don't do much of it, but it is good to ever so often play on it, and that's good that's to be what back. I'm sort of thing. Yeah. Cool, yeah. cool. Right. Okay then, right. Let's uh, let's end it here, guys. I think. Yeah. Um, Great. So, yeah. Thank you guys very, very much for for coming on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank um, you. you. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed on. yourselves. Um, it's been a great, great conversation. Great topics. Um, so yeah, Ashton, um, what are you going to be up to this month? Do you think? Um, so Any, anything anything on the horizon to play? Um, is anything on the for the horizon to play? <laughs> hey, pun city. Uh, I don't know. I just guess we'll see what happens. Maybe a little bit more destiny, but I think I'll just carry on playing the um, Jack and Daxter games and going through them. Cool. Cool, cool, maybe cool. And maybe after you've done with Jack and Daxter, you can go Ratchet and Clank. And... Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, oh, love it, dude. Sly love Cooper? Yeah, Sly Cooper. Sly Raccoon? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, obviously, you're, I, I think you're you're not on any of the social networks, so people can pester you if they don't agree with your opinion. I'm afraid not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not into that. You're the, you're the lucky one. Uh <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much, Ashton. Uh, Josh, uh, obviously from Singularity Games, he started his channel a couple of months back, uh, yeah. or last month, or wherever it was. Yeah, it's last um, month. What have we got coming up on the channel? What have we well, got coming? I mean, I, I do apologise. I mean, if you are already subscribed to me, my content has been slightly sporadic. Um, I have, I have a lot of, a lot more of the uh, M15. Let's play. I just need to edit it, but the problem is that because I run a gaming society at, at the university I, I go to, I'm a third year at university, so I have a dissertation to write, and also um, I have a job as well. It's just trying to, I, I just need to find myself five minutes just to edit some some episodes. Um, to f apart from that, I'm actually thinking about doing a Let's Play of Alan Wake, um, just because I absolutely adore that game. I've got the computer now to play it, I can put my trackpad in, uh, my game pad in and just have a go and i might do some little silly things like game dev tycoon uh and i might even go backwards on the old magic scale and go back to one of the older titles i think awesome. and then um i mean and if uh i know i don't think i don't think rob's announced it to his channel um but i might be collaborating with you as well at some point yeah no you will be we'll be collaborating very soon with uh with i think quite a few things really to be honest that's that's good to hear. But yeah, so, so look out for yeah. that if you want to yeah. hear from. No, definitely, definitely go me. go subscribe to Singularity Games. Um, well, I will and Josh. endeavour to keep myself up to date as well as I physically can. Yeah, no worries. Um, but he's got a good channel there, so go go subscribe. Um, and uh, as for, as for myself, um, I'm probably going to be continuing playing Skyrim in my spare time. Probably doing a little bit more of live streaming as well. I'm gonna I'm trying to get a sort of weekly schedule up for my my streaming at least uh, trying to do one stream over the weekend at some point um, every week either a Saturday or a Sunday um, probably going to be doing more Skyrim um, or whatever people want me to play really um, obviously continuing um, with my new Let's Play uh, Lord of the Rings War in the North with uh, Tasha um, which is awesome. Um, so more more episodes of that coming very soon, and I will be coming out with more vlogs and shenanigans will be happening. Yeah, as well. So I was about to so, say you should yeah. definitely be, this, be subscribing to Rob, but to be honest, you're probably not watching this unless you are subscribed <laughs> to Rob anyway. But yeah. So yeah, well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching and listening, and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And thank you as well to Ashton and Josh for coming on and joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Very welcome. Um, so yes, we will catch you next month on the Undead Gaming Cast. And as soon as this thing goes live on iTunes, I will let everyone know. So yeah, I think I think you should do a separate video of you just like dancing in celebration it's because done you're, you're five, i did it i worked it you're, out you're five two hour stints at a month of time <laughs> of you saying it's going on itunes soon <laughs> so I, th I think you definitely need to do a a little celebratory video when you get it done. definitely definitely sounds good to okay me. well thank you very much guys and right. uh we'll catch you next time Bye 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 bye